it again. Thank you, kids, uh, for those videos. Again, if you want to do some more videos this week, that's a highlight of our week. And so, or if you want to quote a verse, do a Bible story, we encourage you to do that, or maybe a picture, whatever you'd like to do this week. Again, thank you for doing that. And then also in this time of our service, we usually have a prayer partner. We have pastors' prayer partners, and we send out a weekly email, and people pray uh, for us and the ministry. If you'd be in, uh, interested in that, there's a digital contact form there in the comment section. If you're guests, any prayer requests, any questions you have, you can fill that out. And so let's dive into God's Word today. Uh, and since we saw some little kids, this will kind of be timely. There's a little. There's a man, he worked a long day of work, and he came home, and his son was already in bed. He went in to say good night to his son. And the little boy started badgering his dad about money. And he said, Dad, how much money do you make? And father's a little frustrated. Enough. And the boy, you know, is going to keep pressing. Now, it's not that. How much money do you make an hour? And all of a sudden, dad's getting frustrated, and he gives him a little talk. and says, they pay me $25 an hour. So the boy, as you know, says, can I borrow $10? And the father says, no, go to bed. So the next morning, father's, the overworked father feels a little bit guilty about the way he treated his son. So he decides, he says, when he sees his son, he says, son, here's the $10 bill. So the little boy lit up like a Christmas tree, and he runs back in his room. He comes back in, he brings his little piggy bank, and he starts spilling the contents of it, pennies and dimes and nickels, and he pushes it all up to his dad, and he takes that $10 bill, and he puts it next to his dad. As he's watching curiously what his his son is doing, he says, son says this, says, Daddy, here's $25. Can I buy an hour of your time? So you need to understand, our Heavenly Father wants to spend so much time with us that He literally paid for it with His Son, Jesus Christ, who came to pay for our debt, to remove every barrier, to tear down every wall and every bridge so that we might have a personal relationship with Christ. So we're going to be in the Gospel of Mark today, and we're going to look at the importance of spending quality time with Jesus. So we're in this series. If you're guests with us, we started the series Jars of Clay. And the first week, just want to remind you what we looked at. We looked at how God has chosen to place the gospel in clay jars of Christ. So our bodies are clay jars. Back then, clay jars were very common. They were, e- they were fragile, easily broken, but they were plentiful. They were inexpensive. You could find broken clay jars anywhere. What was amazing is they would put all kinds of stuff that was needed and even expensive things in these unassuming containers. And so God placed the gospel in us. Last week we looked at how man's weakness and God's grace go hand in hand. And he told Paul, he said, hey, my grace is sufficient for you. Those Paul had this thorn. He said, Lord, take it away three times. The Lord said, hey, no. He says, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is perfected in weakness. And he, then Paul says, all right, most gladly. I will boast in my weakness. And he says, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Today we're going to see, as jars of clay, uh, we need daily dependence. And we're going to talk about daily dependence. And so we're going to be in Mark chapter 1, the gospel of Mark. You get New Testament. you got Matthew, Mark. And so let's look at chapter 1, verses 35 through 39. It says this, Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he got up, went out, and made his way to a deserted place. And there he was praying. And Simon and his companions searched for him. And when they found him, they said, Everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, Let's go on to the neighboring place villages so that i may preach there too this is why i've come and he went into all of galilee preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons and so the take-home truth that i want you to get today that we're going to see from the life of jesus that we need in our own life is your personal quiet time with god must be a daily priority your personal quiet time with god must be a daily priority priority say what's a quiet time well that's where you spend some time with God in prayer and in the word 
Now, some people may call it daily devotions. I call it a quiet time. And as we celebrate Mother's Day, praise God for godly mothers uh, that spend time with the Father. Uh, praise the Lord for my own mother. You, she spends time with the Lord every day. You can go into her house and you can see her desk. She's got her Bible out. You can see where she's been taking notes and she's been praying. Praise God for godly mothers. But you need to understand Christianity is not a legal relationship. It's not do's and don'ts. It's, it's a love relationship. You say, hey, I, I don't have this love relationship. Let me tell you how, can, how you can have this love relationship. Because before you can have a quiet time with God, you've got to have a love relationship with the Father. You say, how do I get one? Well, it's pretty much like this. Very beginning in the Bible, it says God created the heavens and earth. It's all good. He created Adam and Eve. They lived on earth, and everything's going good, until one day they decided they knew better than God. And because of that, sin entered the world, and we inherited a sin nature. And that's the bad news. We've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and because of that sin, it leads to what? Brokenness. Which also gives us even worse news, because Scripture says, for the wages of sin is death. But there is good news, because most of you know John 3, 16, if you don't, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. So you've got to believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You've got to believe that he paid for your sin debt and defeated death, hell, and the grave. But then you've got to repent. Now, that's a Bible word. It's kind of a spiritual U-turn. Say, what is that? It's a change of mind, which leads to a change of attitude, behavior, and lifestyle. See, you have to have believe and repent. How do I receive this? Scripture says you receive it by faith, not by works. How does it become mine? Scripture says whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. He will change your life if you will put your faith and trust. Take your life, put it in the hands of Jesus. He will save you today. And then Jesus says, now follow me and live for me. That's the gospel. See, once you have that, man, you can spend time with Jesus. You say, hey, I don't have that relationship with Jesus. Let me tell you, to give your life to Christ today, that'll be the greatest thing you've ever done. You say, hey, I don't even know how to do it. I'll give you an opportunity here in just a minute. But let me say this. If you do have a love relationship with Jesus, the question is, do you have a daily quiet time with Jesus? So what I want to do today is I want to look at two truths from the life of Jesus, and then I'm going to give you a lot of application. Okay, so if you have an outline there, follow along with me. It's already in the, you can uh, print one out there. It's also, but follow along with me because I'm going to give you a whole lot of application today and how you can have a personal quiet time with God. Number one, first truth from life of Jesus is Jesus makes spending time with the Father a priority. He makes spending time with the Father the priority. Now, if you read the context, the verses before, Jesus has been doing a lot of teaching, a lot of healing. He goes to uh, casting out demons. He even goes to Peter's mother-in-law's house, heals her. Man, it, it's a long day of ministry. And then he gets up before sunrise and goes out and spends time with God. He finds a deserted place so he can out encounter God and spend time with him. And so what Mark is stressing is even though Jesus had a hectic schedule, he spent time with the Father. Now let me just say this. If Jesus practiced time alone with God the Father, <laughs> then every Christ follower needs time alone with the Father. It all begins with quality time. It all begins with a daily communion. Now Jesus got up when? Very early in the morning. Say, so do we have to have one in the morning? It helps because why? That's when you start your day. Or whenever you start, and maybe if you work night shift, it'd be different, but you know. Uh, but we want to start our day with the Lord. Because many times, spending time with the Lord and our prayer unlocks the key for what God wants to do in our lives. Ken Hughes said this, look at what he says on the screen. He says, it says he reminds us that though Jesus was God, he did not live his life as God apart from the Father, but what? rather as a man in dependence upon God. See, daily dependence <coughs> upon God must be a priority. If it was with Jesus, it needs to be a priority in our life. And so we see that Jesus made spending time with the Father a priority. Number two, second truth that we see is Jesus prays before he goes and preaches and serves. 
Man, if you're going to serve the Lord, you need to pray. Now, what's interesting, he's gone. If you look at the text, he's gone uh, to get away with the Father. And what happens? Peter and, his com- and some of the other disciples finally find him and say, Hey, Lord, there's a crowd back there. Uh, man, we're going to be popular. Man, we're going to be able to sell T-shirts and videos and everything. Man, we can go back. And Jesus says, No, the mission is to move on. And to be dependent upon God. It's for me, the mission is for me to go out and tell people the kingdom of God has come. That's why Jesus came. To inaugurate and tell people the kingdom of God has come. But do you know what Jesus knew? He knew to give out, you must take in. Don't miss that. Daily we need strength and direction from the Lord. Why? Because he knows what we're going to face. And the only way we can serve the Lord uh, and give him the glory is we've got to take in before we give out. Now what happens many times in our lives? We get distracted and we don't spend time with the Lord. Or we get too busy. We say we get too busy. I love what C.S. Lewis, he always pointed out, uh, there was no one busier than Christ. There was no one busier than Christ. Now, with this COVID-19, some of you, your lives may have slowed down big time. And maybe what God is trying to tell you today is you need to hit a reset button and start spending time with Jesus. Why? Because you have the time to do it. I think that's what God is saying to all of us, Christ. He's saying, man, I want to spend time with you daily. I want to hang out with you. I want you to depend upon me. I want to guide you because I know what's best for you. And if Jesus knew, hey, I need to spend time with the Father, and now that I'm fixing to go minister, I need to go do that. Well, you and I probably do need to do that too. And so we see that in the life of Jesus. You, you, You can't miss that. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. He spent time with Jesus. He spent time with the Father, and he spent time with the Father before he went and served. So let's get into some application. First part I want to give to you is just examples of those in the Bible who had a quiet time, pretty much. Now, the first one we've already hit, but I just want to remind you, Jesus, this is not the only text (laughs) that talks about Jesus. So the first one would be Jesus is... This is not the only text that talks about this. There's several in the gospel. Uh, Matthew 14 talks about he sent people home and went up in the hills to pray. Luke 5, 16 says Jesus often withdrew to the wilderness to pray. Did you get this? Uh, Luke 6, 12, one day soon afterward, Jesus went up on the mountain to pray, and he prayed to God all night. See, he slipped away. He got away from all the hustle and the bustle and the craziness of life. And if you don't think Jesus had people pressing on him, you've not been reading the Gospels. Because he had people everywhere wanting his attention wanting him to minister to them and he got alone and slipped away again if jesus can slip away uh you and i have no excuses sorry to bust your bar- bubble there but we don't have any excuses number two is abraham abraham spent time with a father father abraham Look at Genesis 17, 3. It says, Then Abram fell face down, and God spoke with him. He spent time, Father Abraham. Father Abraham spent time with Father? You and I can too. Third one, I'm just going to hit these fast, so I'm not preaching on these here. I'm just giving them to you, okay? The next one is Moses. In Exodus 19 and 20, he got the Ten Commandments. He spent 40 days up on the mountain. He went up on the mountain more than that and spent time with God on the mountain so he could hear from God. Then you've got David, King David. He spent time uh, also with the Father. Look at Psalm 5.3. It says, In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. He says, what, in the morning I plead my case to you and watch expectantly. What's he doing there? I think he's praying and talking with the Father. So David spent time with the Father. But if you read the Psalms, 
<coughs> you also see him pouring out his heart in the midst of crisis. And we're in the midst of a crisis. He's pouring out his heart before God. Read Psalm 51. He's pouring out his heart in confession and repentance after his grave sins with Bathsheba and stuff going on there. Another one is Daniel. You see Daniel living in a place, Babylon, very much like America, and he spent time with the Father. Look at Daniel 6.10. It says, when Daniel learned that the document had been signed, he went into his house. There had been a government uh, edict. You cannot pray but to the king. It says what? The window's in its upstairs room, open towards Jerusalem, and what? Three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed and gave thanks to his God just as he had done before. So Daniel spent time with the Father. And then, let me give you one example before we get into some application. The early Christ followers also spent time with the, with the Father. In Acts 2.42, it says this, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. So they got alone with God. Now, you can see that's pretty, pretty straightforward. And you might be saying, all right, you made your case. How do I do one? That's what we want to talk about the rest of this morning. And I just want to drop some elements of a quiet time in your heart to help you in this area. Number one, the first element of a quiet time that you need to have is you need the right time. Now, what do you mean by that? Well, you need to find time that's good for you. Jesus and David and many others did it in the morning. Now, you know the daily rhythm of your life. And again, COVID-19 may have changed that rhythm, and you got, now have a new rhythm, and you're trying to figure this out. But you've got to find a rhythm that works best for you. You've got to find and make a predetermined time. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's after you've had your cup of coffee. Maybe it's after you fed the kids. Maybe it's after they've taken a nap. I don't know. Your life is different than my life, but you've got to find time to do it. It's got to be a predetermined time. Hey, I'm going to do this. You say, how long? I think you need to spend at least 20, 30 minutes. Now, that might scare some of you, but I, if that scares you, try 10 minutes. You think 10 minutes is long. Spend 10 minutes with Jesus, and you'll find out that's not very long at all. And as you start spending 10 minutes with Jesus, say, hey, and then you're going to realize, man, I want to spend a little bit more time with Jesus, and you'll be able to up that. See, don't try to find time. If you try to find time, you won't find it. You have to make time. It's a priority. You're like, hey, I want to spend time with Jesus. The thing is, don't give God your leftovers. Give him your best. So that means you, to give him your best, you've got to find the right time for you. Again, every person is different. You have a daily rhythm, you find what works best for you. What works best for me won't work for you. It's got to work for me. Number two, you need a private place. Got to find a private place. Matthew 6, 6, when Jesus is talking about the model prayer, he says, but when you pray, go into your what? Private rooms, shut your door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. So set aside. Man, you've got to have a particular place. Again, it's yours. Mine's in my chair in front of my desk. Yours might be uh, on the back porch. Yours might be somewhere else. Doesn't matter. You have to find a place where you can get alone. Did you notice what Jesus did? He got up, went out, and made his way to what? A deserted, solitary place. Have you seen the movie War Room? Remember the, the older lady? She's teaching uh, the young mother, wife, Priscilla Shire, and she takes her into what? her prayer closet she had turned a closet into her prayer room and the mother did too see find a place again 
your place won't be the same as my place. But you've got to find a place where you can get alone with God. If Susanna Wesley, who had 17 kids, can have a daily quiet time, you can too. So how did she do that? She taught her kids when she put the apron over her head, that was mama spending time with Jesus and don't bother her. So find a private place. Number three, uh, this is going to be hard for some of you. You need to avoid feeling rushed. When you and I get rushed, we're not going to receive the love from God and we're not going to receive the instruction from God. Jesus was never in a hurry. You can't move any faster than the one that you're following. Now, was Jesus tempted to run in the fast lane? Oh, yeah. But he never did. I remember one day, and you may know this story, he was invited into this house of these two ladies. Jesus and his disciples. And they went in, and they were going to prepare a meal. And if you remember the one sister, sister's name was Martha, and she was frantic. We've got, we got to get the meat, and we've got to get the potatoes. We've got to get everything set up. It's got to look nice. We've got to have the flowers out and everything. And she's going haywire. And she's mad because her sister's not helping. And what was her sister doing? Sitting at the feet of Jesus, Mary. And Jesus said, hey, she's doing what needs to be done. See, God is in no hurry. Let me say this. This is, this, is just, uh, uh, th- this is just real life, okay? If you do a quiet time, there's going to be things come up in your brain. Okay? You might think, oh, man, i got to do this today. i got to do this today. i got to do that. Oh, I forgot to put that on my list. You know what you do? If you're doing a quiet time, you, if you got a note there, you take it or you say, Siri, remind me, I need to do this. And you go back to your quiet time. John Ortberg said this, the great danger is not that we will renounce our faith, It is that we become so rushed and preoccupied that we will settle for a mediocre version of it. You need a right time, right place, and not rush. Next, you need proper preparation. You need proper preparation. Say, what do you mean by that? Uh, If you look at the next slide, you can go ahead and give that to me. Uh, You need a notebook or a pen. If you, if you type stuff on a computer, smart device, you do it on your iPad, your phone, I don't care. You need those things. You need to write down stuff. You need a prayer list, or maybe you use a prayer app like Prayer Mate. You need those things before you come to have a quiet time. And so you need some preparation. You need the right time, right place, and not rush. And number five, you need a plan. You need a plan. See, a goal without a plan is just a wish. Hey, I, I think I'll do that. you got to have a plan. If you don't have a plan, you won't do it. Robbie Gallaty says, if you're going to be a disciple of Christ, you must have a daily quiet time with God. And I agree with that. And so you're like, hey, I keep hearing you. How do I have a quiet time? Okay. Now here we're fixing to show you how to have one. Okay. Uh, and so I want to give you four essentials. Some of you know this. You've been around with us long. If you're guests, you may have never seen this before, but we're going to fix to teach you how to have a quiet time. Number one, you need to read and engage the Bible. Read and engage the Bible. Adrian Rogers said this, we want to read the Bible for quality, not quantity. If you don't realize, that's what we've been doing for over the last five years. As we read through the Bible and through the meta-narrative, we're reading for quality, not quantity. You say, what do you mean by quantity? Many times, we, if you've been saved for a while, you've read, hey, I read my four chapters a day, okay? Well, what did you read, Brad? Well, I know it was in 1 Kings, but that's about all I remember. Because we're not engaging with it. Right now, it's very simple. Reading the New Testament, one chapter a day for five days a week. You get behind, you got two days in the weekend to catch up. If you're a guest, you're listening to this, you're like, hey, I want that. I want that reading plan in that comment section, that digital contact form. Just send us a contact. We'll send it to you so you can read along with us. We're talking about more than reading a chapter and say, oh, I read my chapter today. No, we want you to engage with the Bible. Say, what is Bible engaged? It's where I'm going to read this chapter, 
and I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to allow God to speak to me, and if God wants to change something in my life, I'm going to allow him to change something in my life. If he convicts me of sin, I'm going to allow him to convict me of sin. If he tells me to do something, I'm going to do what he tells me to do. And so how do we do this in Bible engagement? Well, number two, you need to do a hear journal. I say, what's a hear journal? Well, some of you have been around here, you know what a hear journal is. Let me explain to you very quickly how to do a hear journal. This week, one of our chapters was Mark 1, right? Okay, Mark 1. So let's just pick the text that we're using for today. Okay, H is highlight, because when you're going to read a chapter, many times God will speak to you in a certain area. The E stands for explain. What would you write there? Say, so, hey, while Jesus was doing, had a busy day of ministry, the next morning he gets up, spends time with the Father. He realized the necessity of that because he knew he was fixing to go out and preach and serve some more. So he prayed and got guidance from the Father. Now, what's A stand for? Application. Now, what would be application? Oh, I need to read the Bible. I need to pray need to spend time with the Father. It should be a priority in, 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 in my life. Now, what was R stand? R stands for response. It might be a prayer. Lord, I thank you, man. I can spend time with you anytime, anywhere, no matter what day. Or it might be an action step. All right, Lord, I want to commit. I've not been having a daily quiet time. Today, I want to commit to start having a daily quiet time with you. You say, hey, I need some more information. Well, you've got... This white book here, this adult book, our New Testament Foundations book, if you look in verse, uh, pages 6 through 8, it'll show you how to do one. And page 270, it'll actually give you a sample of how to do one. And so that's why you want to do one. You say, hey, why do I need to write anything down? Let me remind you, the shortest pencil is greater than the longest memory. You'll forget it. Why do I want to write it down? Why do I want to write down, I'm not that far in mind, but why do I want to write down stuff in my book? Because I need, sometimes God might take it back there and teach me something. God may say, hey, I want you to teach this to somebody else. But why? You that have kids and grandkids, don't you want to leave a legacy of how God spoke to you and worked in your life? See, that's why we need to spend time reading and engaging with the, the Bible and journaling what God is speaking in our heart. But number three, we need to have Scripture memory. And again, in our, in, in our books, is, you got three options of what you can memorize. you got Psalms, verse from Psalms, verse from Proverbs, or my D group, me, we're, we're memorizing the Sermon on the Mount. So you, even in this book, you've got options uh, of how to to have a quiet time. I mean, we have given you the plan. I mean, we give you a plan every year here to help you with this so that you can engage and draw closer to God. And then number four, we want to pray. We want to pray. And again, the simple way I just teach this and remember this P is praise and R is repent and A is ask and Y is yield. Hey, man, we want to praise God. I need to repent of sins in my life. Man, once I do that, man, I can ask prayer for others. I can ask God to pray for my request. But then what do I ultimately have to do? I got to yield to his will. Why? Because prayer is about the will of God and it's not about our will. Let me say this. Let me ask you this question. How close are you to God? I can tell you how close you are today. You're like, no, you can't. Yes, I can. You're as close as you want to be. See, God is willing to get as close to you as you're willing to get close to Him. James 4, 8 says, draw near to God, and He'll draw near to you. But you need to understand what I'm telling you will bring an enemy that will come crashing on your jar of clay, which we're preaching on Wednesday nights, why you need the armor. You need to understand the devil will do anything to try to steal time from you and to keep you from spending time with the Father. There was a motto framed on a wall, and it was in the form of a letter, and it says this. It says, Dear Christian, when you're faced with a busy day, save precious time by skipping your devotion. Sincerely, Satan. 
Why should we have a quiet time? Because we love the Lord Jesus. Why don't we? You want to know why? We don't know him that well. Plus, we listen to the devil and don't do it. Why do we need a quiet time? We need to be daily dependent upon the Lord. If Jesus was dependent upon the Father, you and I need to be dependent upon the Father. See, as you come to know Jesus, you know what will happen? You'll come to love Jesus. And as you come to love Jesus, you know what will happen? Then you want to obey Jesus. That's why Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. See, it's about knowing Jesus, loving Jesus, and as we know and love him, you know what? Hey, we'll want to spend time with him. We'll want to obey him. So what do we need to do? Make it a goal to spend every day with Jesus. You're like, hey, what if you miss a day? God still loves you and he'll forgive you and me. Say, Lord, sorry I missed yesterday. I'm ready today. This is not about guilt. It's about growing closer to Jesus, living for Jesus. The early African converts, let me wrap it up this way, to Christianity, man, they were devoted in their quiet times. Every day, what they would do, they would, they would have this separate spot in the thicket, and they would kind of cut it out, and they would start walking out there, and they would go out in the thicket, and they would pour out their heart to God and say, God, I need you today. Lord, may you work in my life. And they would pray and talk with God. And as they would go every day and spend time with the Father, all of a sudden the path would become very well worn. And the grass would become very well packed down. But it was soon apparent if huh, someone didn't spend time with with the father because the grass would start to grow and they would kindly go up to their brother and sister and kind of remind them and they would say this they would say brother or sister uh grass grows on your path let me say this may there be no grass on your path to the father may it be a worn out path i mean just <laughs> Pack down because you're spending time with the Father. Or do you have a lot of weeds and behavior growing up on your path? So your personal quiet time with God must be daily priority. You said, will this be easy? No. <laughs> John Maxwell said this, everything worthwhile is uphill. You need to understand, you've got to be intentional to have a daily quiet time. Is it worthwhile? Yes. If you're going to be daily dependent upon him, you've got to spend time with him. Why? Because we're jars of clay and we can't do it on our own. But you've got to make it a daily priority. Why? Because it is worthwhile. And because it is worthwhile, you know what? It has eternal implications. So understand, it's got to be a priority. And if you'll spend time with Jesus, praise God, he's there to spend time with us. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you and praise you. We thank you for your love and grace and mercy. And Lord, we do thank you for the gospel. And if you're here this morning or whenever you're watching this online, if you're like, Brad, I've not given my life to Christ, I want to give you an opportunity right now to call on the name of Jesus. To give your life to him like we talked about. Just say, Dear Heavenly Father, if you're by yourself, pray it out loud. If you're with a group, pray it silently. God will hear you. Just say, I know that I'm a sinner. I've blown it. I've broken your laws. But God, I really do believe that you sent your son Jesus to be born of a virgin. He died on the cross for my sins. He was buried in the tomb, but he rose again on the third day, and he's alive and living today. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my heart right now Forgive me of all my sins to become my Lord, Master, and Savior.
from this moment on. Thank you, Lord, for saving me, calling me, and accepting me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you meant that prayer, let someone know. But I also want to just pray for every Christ follower. Lord, just help us and forgive us when we don't spend time with you. But Father, may we see the need to spend every day with you. And Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters. Lord, I pray for this week. You deliver them from the evil one through your name and through your blood, Jesus. Lord, that you'd give them a great week. But Lord, I pray that as they find time to spend with you, Lord, you would pour into them like never before so that they might be able to pour into others. So Lord, we love you. We do praise you. And thank you that Wow, you want to spend time with us, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. So, Lord, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're just going to encourage you. If you have a prayer request, maybe you prayed that prayer with me. Just come.